couple of us are going to go out there and have a look. Uh, who should go? And there's a pregnant pause. Uh, <laughs> turns out science. I don't think the same two are uh, super jazzed to get back. No, out that's there. Uh, actually that's the, that's the problem. Uh, it's it's very interesting, They're but all it's really psyched for the science, but not for the actual yep. experience. Uh, so so you you called it 100 percent that that <laughs> actually exists literally, uh, and so at this point Yuri is not afraid. Well, I'm not afraid, you might. But. I am medical professional. <laughs> uh, Morty is actually bothered by this because he does. He's excited that Morty is not, or Yuri is not afraid. But the point that you are the medical scientist is really risky because if anything happens to you, it's a huge liability. Uh, but there's no one else that the surgeon can't surgeon themselves. Well, I, I mean, I plan to. <laughs> Oh Lord! God. You're gonna be that. You're gonna be that one person in every episode who, like, the doctor who does self surgery with based, a mirror. I base this character off of the Russian who oh my had God. to do, perform self surgery. Yes. Oh, so and I'm gonna make it happen. Oh shit. Lord! <laughs> Whether it's, it's necessary or not, it's the most cringy scene in every movie. It's the one that I always look away at. It's like, oh, I cannot watch this part. Uh, so gonna, is, is anyone get these skilled meat bits in back in the right order? <laughs> I've numbered them accordingly. What do you what do you think, Scott? Um, should should we have someone who's who's skilled in following animal tracks? Is there anyone like that here? Anyone? Anyone experienced animals? Nothing. Little hunting. I mostly deal with little the shooting. Dying. Perhaps I could sing to the little beast, and maybe they'll come too. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I don't I, think so. I have hunting experience in mountains. Koa will go. And he like smiles, his handsome smile, and says, "I I have experience. I can do this." No, not Koval. No, <laughs> that's a death flag right there. What? <laughs> this this is Tony. Is 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 it the hot football jock is always the first to be killed? <laughs> <laughs> so Koval says he'll go and he'll make sure that uh, Yuri's all right. Oh, to go with me? Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Sounds sounds like we have our our men. You should take other rifle. Yes. He definitely will. Do we need to do any prep these, for these this? These are rifles or? that can work in extreme weather, too. Right? They think so. Like, I mean, I've taken this one into the frigid mountains. Well, the like, thing is that most that, of them are pro but... probably fine. The thing is that these are not weather conditions that anyone's ever tested this equipment in. So, I mean, they work fine for polar bears in what, the Arctic North. Was it super it, windy outside? A little bit. Okay. I mean, it's not like the crazy wind, like during the the, the like March of the Penguins like tundra, type of yeah. yeah. But okay. it's it's windy enough that it would be uncomfortable, like where We're not so you windy can feel it in your suit. Like sure, you can... not so windy the tracks might just be gone. Going. Right, right, yeah, definitely not. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. you guys get in there and suit up, and the rest of you are gonna like monitor. Turn on the flood lamps. You take your lights out, mm -hmm. and this time you're not carrying heavy uh, e testing equipment, but you're bearing rifles. Uh, <clears throat> by uh, the way, so so what? We have like film equipment. No, um, you you you've got rifles, and you've got your. Well, we had they had like film equipment on there. Yeah, that's head your your digital recording thing. Is sure. it's basically like each suit's uh, black box. Like it basically okay. will record everything you say and do in video. I'm, I'm bringing like. A, a stocked or like first aid stuff like the um whatever it is like the, the sealant stuff that you just spray to like um seal up a oh wound. the first aid stuff oh yeah yeah, yeah. sure that's um, the, the, the the hardcore back team i would i would love to think of yuri uh <laughs> shooting and killing the last of an endangered species <laughs> and what kind of notoriety that would bring him <laughs> there'd be no way of knowing but uh, so the so the cool thing is so you, so you bring a med pack. Very last so, so you have a little bit of equipment that you're carrying. So you got your rifle and you got your med pack. Uh, I'm the man who kills Griffin. So you I killed the unicorn. So you only you, cowards shoot first. You trek out there, <laughs> and uh, you get you 
So first of all, the the first thing is you trek out there and you realize, oh, we should collect up some of these lost samples pieces that have been like scattered around. Sure. So you grab some of that stuff, and yeah, you it you Do can. Do we have anything to like make uh, plaster casts with, or ca any sort of footprint cast? No. <laughs> yeah. Plaster cast. You could just pour some water into yeah, it. Don't I have plaster <laughs> for casts? No. <laughs> so, so you know how pour some water well, into the snow. Well, you know how no. casts work now, right? They, they yeah. don't work the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're <laughs> literally they're, they're they're built in. You just soak them in water and you wrap them. Yeah. yeah. So they don't and use soak them in water. <laughs> wrap the footprint. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not they're not soft enough. It would work. Well, we're gonna get like a video of this prints anyway. Yeah. So so first of all, let's what you can find they're not even good prints because this is ice tundra with like a thin snow layer and the only reason that it's not blown away by the wind as heavy as it is is because this is literally a desert it almost never actually snows here and when it does snow it doesn't melt so it's just packed over time so because of this it's that like crazy crunchy snow that basically you create an imprint and it stays forever almost and over time, it will roll away. But luckily, because of the nature of the environment, you do see some print tracks that have already started to wind shear away a little bit, but they're still clearly in there. And you can very much see, once you're in there, when you shine your light out there, that they come from a distance uh, from further ahead where the Falcon would have headed towards, and then back towards where you came and away towards the mountains. Okay. Um, I'm gonna like get good shots of like my foot right as like for scale right next to the prints. Uh, it's about half the size, so they're like a. I'm sorry, not half the about the same size. So they're basically a what looks to be a typical mammalian paw print, like you would see on a cat or something. Mm -hmm. It has three digits only, and you can see marks in front that look like claws. So it's okay, like a so three claw sort of like talon, one. but it's a paw print. Like you either seen or experienced like cat or bear prints, and it looks like that kind of paw. Sure, but not with the right amount of digits. Right. And it's distinguished that it's very clearly not like a talon or anything like that. So you can tell that much. Almost like it. a paw in the shape of a talon? Uh, kind of what you, I think. Maybe you if it wasn't like rounder, but it does have that whole... The front part where you see the claw marks, that's what normally you would see as talon-like. But the back part is clearly that puffy, rounder look of a paw. And it's very clear it is a quadruped. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, like, have have uh, the, the other guy um, record me, like, jumping in and, like, trying to make a print with my, with my foot for, oh. for weight judge. Oh, uh, judgment! <coughs> uh, just for like for you fall through the ice. <laughs> yeah. just, so uh, we'll compare some later. It's a little bit hard to judge because uh, like person you, weighing approximately this much with this gear can make yeah. this deep of an impression compared to this. It's weight. a little bit hard because beneath estimates. the the snowpack is permafrost, mm -hmm. and so there's not great depth um, thing. I don't you know can what make. else to do. Uh, <laughs> but what you can tell is that this thing is based on the distance of the paws and stuff like that, oh, sure. given the fact that it was running, it's probably just about the size of a big tiger. Um, <clears throat> so not gigantic. It would be consistent with what you saw as being the size of the face and the look of the thing. Uh, based on just your jumping into the paw prints and things and the weight of your suit, it's probably maybe about the weight of a lion uh like you think it's a creature that's about that size sure but heavier than it might be otherwise had it just been a normal lion okay but it does look um, like it's because basically its prints definitely look deeper than you're able to make okay um we grab the samples um describe the samples to to the guys who went out there first like are, are these the samples that that you, are, are these in good condition to bring back? Do you need us? You to... you should just bring whatever you can back because okay. we can't just throw tubes away like out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, do we need to do more out here, or were you finished? 
Oh, we weren't they, finished, they but just grab eat. your stuff. Just, okay. just get whatever you can that we left out there. There's just basically like some equipment and like bottles and things like that. They're just scattered when they were knocked over. Okay. And they just grab what they could and all those. Yep. So at this point, you are going to follow the tracks uh, back south. Or not south. There's only one direction you're on the south pole. Uh, back in the direction from which you came. <laughs> yes, our tracks. But back oh. towards. Oh, or... are you coming back to the Falcon? Well, okay. They, That's the question. We were we were told ten minutes or so we can last out here. No, you, you can be out here on. for hours because you're in the suits. Okay, got yeah. it. You, if you just bundle up and came out here to grab someone in the suit, you'd be out there ten minutes and then you'd be dead, <laughs> or at risk of that. Well, the the tracks lead back the direction we came towards the mountains. How far from the Falcon should we plan to trek? Are we are we seriously going to hike into the mountains? The no, two of to us. You. What what do you see? Do you think do you think you can get a bead on where we should head? W- would we be taking the Falcon that direction? If you can find a track that would lead us in the right direction. Well, if we want to, we want to make sure we don't lose the tracking. Okay. Um. And and they can see us where we are, like yes. in the light. Um. I'm going to like t- make a bead with the tracks and like determine like okay between those two peaks there, and describe to the the Falcon or whoever's yep. gonna gonna be driving the. Uh, at this point, <clears throat> like Scott. Yeah. All right. Uh, that range over there, uh, counting from from the right, we're we're going to be making a. A line for between peaks D and E. All right. Ooh. I have an idea. And at this point, uh, Scott gets on the intercom and goes, give us a moment. we see if we can turn the bird around. We'll follow you. You stay ahead of the Falcon. We'll follow you as you're tracking. That was my idea. Yep. Uh, All right. So you guys wait for a little bit, and they rotate the Falcon towards you guys. Um, they turn off the the rotational lights, and they keep in. And you're now in the front beams of the Falcon's lights, uh, super bright. So you're bat lit. Luckily, it's behind you. If it was in front, you'd be blinding, and it shines way further than than your headlamps can. And you can very clearly see at least. A couple hundred feet, the tracks are leading backwards and slightly rearing towards the mountains. And now the Falcon is slowly rolling towards you guys as you guys are walking along the track line. Okay, we will make steady progress. All right, so you guys are gonna get. And at this point, you should. Oh, well, I'm I'm one of them. Should roll for. The first roll of the game. <laughs> oh, no, his was the first roll oh, of the game. Oh, he did roll. That's right, there was a luck roll. <laughs> I can't have any. <laughs> Sorry. I can't have it. science. I can't have rolls. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. What am I doing here, mate? All right, so what am I doing here? We're here to die. You say Does that, Rico say that, and I, 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 I look at you, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to save the environment. We're here to die. <laughs> I'm just messing around with you, mate. We're here to, we're here to document this. We're here to show the world that what we're doing here is worth it. We're to inspire the young, to make the others know that the climate is important. All right, I'm gonna go with ice. So, uh, go with either your better of listen or spot hidden. That is spot hidden. Percentage target under. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> seventy-five against seventy-five. Oh my god. <laughs> spot on. Mm. Spot on. Spot on, mate. Well, you you are, you're infinitely better. Than Kowal, who was looking in the wrong direction. Well, we're going this way. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't look; you'll be blinded. <laughs> well, so that's actually part of the problem. It's actually too bright, 
uh, it turns out the the running lamps of the Falcon are way yeah, too seeing intense. Seeing white on white with yeah. a really bright light. Is, so uh, it's really hard. intense, but just barely, you see out of the edge of the light as it like gets into the shadow where it starts to get a little bit craggy, uh-huh. what you thought was a shadow leaping out of the edge of the light. Um, and it occurs to you that the light of the Falcon is making it harder for you to actually make this track because it's basically projecting your arrival and it's basically if there is something out there it is basically running away from this bright light that's shining towards it hmm, it it's it's getting hard to harder to see the tracks than I thought can we bring the lights down to 50 percent on the front Oh, I don't think it's on dimmer switches, mate. I think it's just... Yeah, unfortunately... I think it's a proper on-off situation. Un- unfortunately, like... that part is true. It's it's a weird thing about the science of these vehicles is that they actually just have lights to turn on and off. I might not be okay. a scientist well, of any kind. We have, we have <laughs> flashlights. So well, what they're going to do... So what they're going to do is they're going to turn off the lights and they're going to follow what they can see of just the two of you glowing in the distance. Well, hold on. Couldn't you turn on the all-around lights instead... And then you'd be able to see a little bit in front of you due to the light occlusion. Oh, no. The all-around lights are just the front lights with equally bright lights in the other four directions. Oh, okay. You can't just, <laughs> you can't just turn off the front lights and have all the other around lights off or on? Oh, you can. But actually what that does is that it actually makes the front even darker because of the contrast. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's an unfortunate, it's, the occlusion part sounds really correct scientifically. Unfortunately, it fails the human eyeball test. The problem with human it's eyeballs is that their ah, adjustment okay. yeah. is that they see how bright it is in the sides. And so they actually make the eyes just smaller and they receive less light. So it makes okay. it actually harder to see in the dark. <clears throat> yes, you were, you were, cr- you ruined by biology. Like, well, lots Deborah of, gives lots you a of look. campfires. Yeah, if you've ever been at a campfire at night, you, you can't see out in the darkness. I, I also believe I may have glimpsed the creature at the ed- edge of the light, and that's why we want to uh, maybe <laughs> not scare it away so much. They're, they're very excited by this. So at this point, the Falcon is rolling very slowly because they don't want to accidentally overrun you guys. And everyone is just like at their portholes and at their monitoring stations looking at the, the video screens. They're very excited. And is, is it possible to use the rifle while wearing the big suit? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I should point out, the, these spacesuits are, are specially designed ones. They're not exactly spacesuits. They're, They're not, not like the super game, giant. They're, th- have you seen the new ones that they were on the news all last year? The so. new style type of spacesuits. They're kind of like like alien suits that Slim. are by. Yeah. yeah. They're they're not quite that good like the ones they showed, but they're better, so you have good articulation and stuff like that. Yeah. It's the, the best that money can buy. The future. Yep, it, yeah, they're, they're Elon Musk style suits is basically what it is. So he may have been involved in selling them the tech for this project. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, also part of yeah. So research. at this point, you guys have your rifles up and you're tracking forward and... Out of the dead silence, you hear a howl of not wind and not cat, but it's clearly a sound made by a creature, but it's not familiar. It is not a yeti, that is for sure. Um, you know a lot about them. This this reminds me of, of the Yeti culture. Yeah, it, it, not it quite man. I know what the Yeti yells like. No, not, not quite good. You know what's a good example? Have you guys ever heard a squirrel yell? Oh, yell. yes, actually. Terrifying. Yeah. And, and you know how it doesn't sound anything like what you ever imagined in your entire life what a squirrel it's would sound freaky. like? Imagine you went to the zoo and saw a lion and it made a style of sound the way a squirrel makes a squirrel yell. And you're like, wait, that's not what lions sound like. That's what this sound is like. It's like, why is this squirrel making a baby chirping, yelling noise? That's what you're hearing. It's like, why is this mountain lion 
making an eagle platypus baby chirping noise. And it's definitely coming from the area in the mountains where you saw the shadow. Do we have microphones on the outside of the falcon? You do. That's how you're hearing it. Oh, I was, I was, I had thought that that was just. What oh no, heard. you are all okay. hearing it. Yes. Okay. So. I look, I look straight at Deborah and I say, Deborah, what, what was, what is the closest animal that that sound would be? I have never heard it before. Sounds like a sound effect that you see in a monster movie where they put a bunch of sounds together to make a scary monster sound. This is fantastic. This really is something. As you guys are speculating, less than a minute later, Mm -hmm. another similar sound reverberates through the cavernous area. And it is different enough that you are all convinced it's from a second animal. Yep. It's not alone out there. Boys, I think it's time for you guys to get back to the Falcon. Yes. This this is this is incredible uh, recordings. <coughs> Hopefully, you will immediately comply yep, and we will. double time it back to the, <laughs> we'll back, to the yeah. Falcon. Maybe we should put the lights on just to you know make sure they have. Bit of a safe well, trip back. That'll scare off the buggers. Hopefully. Oh, yeah. We, we definitely turn on the brights to get you guys back into the vehicle. Um, get you out of your suits. They power down the outside lights entirely. And you're now all gathered in the meeting room, uh, which is the equivalent of the mess hall. And people it's are super excited uh, because two things. Number one. This confirms what everyone is thinking. We found the new species. This is fantastic. Number two, it's got to be a mated pair. You all know what that means. A a viable population? Yes. But also, the possible danger of young. We can capture one of the young and bring it back. My God. Now, hold hold on. Hold on. (laughs) Yeah, what, I'm how, not a scientist, <laughs> but I don't think we should be capturing any young. Oh, you are certainly not a scientist. You have no idea. This this is amazing. Am I alone in this? No, it does seem to contradict our environmental mission <laughs> uh, right. somewhat. How, how does one go about <laughs> capturing a young without alerting the parrots, right? How do, how do you go about, in, you know, in your experience from catching, have you done this before? Well, cap- captured young and brought them back. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. How, how do you think? But how do you go zoom? about doing that without alerting the parents? Oh, well, sometimes we do it while the parents are out hunting for food. Um, but you know, noth- you know nothing about these creatures. So. No. Well, we're, we're, we're just speculating about. Uh, we we oh, don't well, have any We don't have time for speculation, mate. So. All we have is time for speculation. We're, we're just discussing our options here. Oh, all right. Well, I don't know. We can only send two people out at a time. I think you should make a bit more educated guess than just speculation, sir. But that's my opinion. We do not have proper equipment for <sighs> capture. You're right. We we, so, we don't have tranks on the on on board. Wait a minute. We we do. Can you doctor up? Our tranquilizers into some way we can deliver it at the end of like a, a stick or something. No, <laughs> I don't believe so. But Yuri, you're a doctor. You guys are bright enough. You can figure something out. I'm, I'm a medical doctor, <clears throat> not a mad scientist. Sh- surely you must have dabbled in, you know, mixing things. So I mean, it is to, to I, make I have a better make idea, maybe. Jewelry rig tranquilizer? Instead of no. you going out to go find it, why don't you have it come to you? Yes, Keep lure, talking. Lure it in. Oh, what by the way, you, talking? you know that the medical supplies on the ship absolutely have enough chemicals that you could easily turn into like some kind of tranquilizer. Like, if you wanted to, you could tranquilize everyone on, on this ship. But um, you would need like a specialized sort of airsoft gun in order to fire it. Yeah, you that we don't use have. a regular rifle. 
basically you you could make to... like a tranquilizer like shot yes. if you had one in front of you to stick yes and try well that's what sure. they were asking because because you that, do because what... you do have those because in addition to the normal things because of this is a science vessel you do have those large metal syringes for like emergency situations that yeah so you could if you wanted to create like a syringe on a stick where you could like have it like and then like deliver it that way but my, my point that is, is that so Yuri not dependable yeah, Yuri can you will be attacked yes before. you know yeah, it's not I, dependable. I'm just like I'm not even gonna tell right. them that right. like I could mix up a tranquilizer because there's no good delivery system right I understand that Yuri would would not want to try anything like this but I just want you to know that that equipment is available to you and if you did okay. want okay. to do it you actually could it just would mean you would have to physically go hand to hand against the creature and be able to stab it and hope that it works fast enough that it doesn't claw your throat out before it takes the effect. I, yeah, I'm gonna make a note to like mix up <coughs> tranquilizer to have just in case. What, what what if we put some tranquilizer in bait? I believe that's what uh, Harry was suggesting. Yes, yeah, so we're we're interested in Harry's idea about bringing the creature to us. Lord with recordings well, I mean, you, of calls. Yeah. 25 minutes ago, you didn't even know this thing existed. You were out there taking samples, and uh, it came and attacked you. Now you're going out there, and uh, it's a bit of a dangerous situation out there. So why don't we just stay close to the ship and, you know, set up a situation? I, I like this idea with the tranquilizer in a, in a you know, do you have a, a bit of ration that you can put out there for the... We could set up remote filming device. We don't know anything about what they ate, but, you know, you guys are proper scientists. So. Surely there was reason it was running across field. Was it going to hunting ground? Can we catch it in between? It, or catch film of it? it I'm, I'm doubting that it's a herbivore. I'm, I'm, it's probably proper carnivore, so... Well, it's unclear whether or not it was hunting, right? I mean... Well, it certainly didn't take a kill. It didn't kill either of you two, so... What in this well, icy tundra, what could have possibly have been eaten out here? That's the point, that it was nothing to hunt Penguins. for. Penguins. Oh, that's true. I mean, they're just like asleep out there, right? The penguins? But here's the other question, too. So you're trying to get one of Yon. I imagine that, you know, Yon's not going to hunt. No. So, you know. That kind of puts a hole in my, my idea. But I'm not an idea guy. I'll just, you know, follow the rules. I... So just so I understand, you want to find the den of these creatures, tranquilize one with a s syringe on a stick. No, it's just an idea with spitballing. But you, but you already said we can't do it. So. All right. It's but you want, to, idea. you want to take one and then what? Where are we going to stick it? Put it in the medical bay. All right, we put it in the medical bay, and then we feed it yeah. something. We feed it stuff, and then we just take it back. Yeah. That seems barbaric. I thought you were scientists, not some Darwin explorers, just taking stuff from the new world just because you can. Well, as long as we don't eat them like Darwin did. Were you planning on eating them? No. Well, good. Of course not. One step above Darwin. Darwin didn't eat them either. Yeah, he did. Turtle soup. He definitely did, yeah. Ringo, if this is indeed a new creature, one that hasn't been seen before, if this is the only like mating pair left, we can't we can't help them if we don't know what they are. And we can't learn what they are. Do you know how many species are alive today because we're keeping them alive in zoos and protected environments? Listen, I'm just saying, I'm here as the social media in influencer. I think I should just be a little bit of a moral compass here because it feels like we're up here in the north and everyone's moral compass is spinning around. We're in the south, aren't we? We are. North. Yeah, we're in the south and uh, our moral compasses are spinning right around because you found something new. Now, if you want... You know. If you want to hunt this beast, fine. Be all that for it. I'm just here to observe. I'm, I'm here to uh, show my followers. Oh, they took your well, social just, media away from me. But, you know, I can't do that. So I guess I'll just twiddle my thumbs 
while you go out and you know playing with beasts, and that's fine. We could do that. Let's do that. Good call. You're right. We're definitely gonna have to do this. What, what, what I'm a bit worried about is if uh, you uh, take the yon. You know, what's to say that they, the parents aren't gonna come and attack? They'll oh, try- they probably certainly will. But this is an armored vehicle, Harry. It is. Yes, and and those outside of it will are squishy meat bags. <laughs> yes, yes, but would be well, pure, once we get it on curing animal. Yes, but w- once we get the animal on board, then then our problems will be mostly over. Oh yes, yeah. so if once we get the animal, we we won't send you back out there. We'll have large cat on board. <laughs> Do you think maybe we Perfectly should get perfectly safe? You think maybe we should get Billy's opinion on this, right? Some authorization. No, why would we? He works for us. I, I, don't, know. I don't know. All right, fine. Fuck it. We're capturing this damn animal. All right, how do we want to do it? Do we want to find the we, cave? We Let's should... just turn the. Falcon, Falcon, over there. We can't pack we, it in, pack it in. We cannot take Falcon into mountains. Leave it, leave it. All right. Okay, so we go on foot. But, we got two people who can go on foot. No, but to think, tracks came from direction we were going. We could continue the direction we were going, see where the tracks came from. What? Perhaps more specimens. Perhaps Ooh. hunting ground. Let's just get Markham out there. Mountains are dangerous. Let's get Markham out there, and maybe it'll run into him again. But Markham wasn't the one out there, was he? Yeah, it was. He was. Yeah. He was. And oh, Morty. Okay. He was not. Morty was the one who got oh, hit. Maybe right. we can get Morty out there, and I'll just run into him again. He seemed to like you, Morty. No, I think that was a random accident. I, I, it clearly wasn't attacking either of us. It, we were just there accidentally. I suspect that this was the same problem that we had. It was probably thinking, it's the long night in the Antarctic. There's no one out here. I'm just going to drive 65 in a 30 zone, and Whoops. suddenly we were here. It would have seen you from far off, though, with your headlamps. So I I, I figure it was more of a, a warning blow, but what do I know? No, that's, uh, that's very fair. Let's take one thing at a time. We got these samples. Let's check the samples out. Like, why we, uh, you know. Mm. Yeah, check on the samples, the ice that we dug up, the original purpose of this mission. That sounds like a great idea. Hmm. I mean, do you want to take all samples? We just go on to just, you know, tracking. As soon as you say that, Wayne goes, good idea. And she gets up and leaves the table. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's si- there's all sorts of scientific fields here. No, she just <laughs> people could be doing. Things. She literally just goes back and heads back to her workstation as soon as you prompted her. She goes, "Yeah, we got some samples. Let's see what you got." These these scientists are a bit aloof. You get them onto the track of like, ooh, uh, samples. <laughs> the, 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 they're like first, like first, like it's like first here, thing. Ooh, thing. Here's the shiny ooh, thing. thing. Oh. Here's the shiny thing out in the mountains. <laughs> so, it's, all right, well. So we were talking about some sort of bait. Um, if what is out here is penguins, if that's how they're surviving through the long winter, then I'm sure we could put together some sort of meat-based bait. With a plenty of frozen chicken. chicken. Yeah. You know what's very interesting is if it had just returned from a hunt and it was bringing food back to the caves there was no indication that the creature had anything in his mouth I mean penguins are large creatures it would have been it would have a hen- penguin in his mouth and left a blood trail or something you, uh, there was no sign of that do you do you recall the uh, the the winged uh, frame from the video some birds uh, regurgitate <laughs> for their young his thought. Oh, we haven't. We yeah, we haven't even determined whether or not it's a, a bird or a cat. So, uh, bird or <clears throat> a feline. But look, Yuri went thanks out there and saw. It was cl- clear, clearly <laughs> as a thanks, quadruped. Thanks, Ryan. right? So I appreciate your help, bro. Just doing what I can. Pretty sure it was not a bird. 
I mean, whatever we saw, it, it probably was not a bird. That was probably a, some sort of trick of the light and the camera. Yuri's already confirmed this is clearly some kind of quadruped. So it's a mammal of some sort. So we know it's not a bird. Um, however, we won't... It is not impossible that a mammal would have a regurgitation methodology of feeding. That, that's entirely possible. It'd be unique in the animal world. But, I mean, we're in the Antarctic. Who knows what kind of biological adaptations could have occurred. So that's entirely possible. Uh, Deborah gets up to the table. You know, I'm going to have another look at that suit. Too bad I should have thought of this before we let you guys well, go out a second time. Yeah, so she now goes out to the lock, and she goes to her war station, grabs... Seems like, like major oversight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, even scientists get excited and forget like what they're supposed to be doing, so they're like, oh my god, something exciting happened, and then came, people came up with a plan. Classic Deborah, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Deborah. Oh, man. Wow, what a dig. Typical Deb. Debbie Not going to let that one go. Okay, He's Debbie. Debbo. <laughs> you are on her list. You're the first one that she lets die in the tundra. I mean, there's only like there's only 12 of us, so. <laughs> Someone had to Somebody has to be at the top of the list. <laughs> uh, if we have some downtime, I'm going to go, like, uh, make some drink uh, large. Drink yeah, so at this point, but just like there is a little bit of downtime because when is over at her table looking at the samples doing chemistry, Deborah is going to like see what she can find from the suit. Hopefully there's still something that will come up for her. And most of you are still in the galley arguing about what's the right thing to do here. Uh, the scientists are mostly say Koal is actually kind of in your camp about the whole this is ecologically wrong thing Thank like you. uh he, he he's been on the talk show circuit talking about climate change responsible ecology and things like that and he he started off sort of like being that kind of like peacemaking i'm a scientist you're just a boy band kid you gotta let the scientists talk thing but as you're talking he's starting to come around he actually like by, as the conversation evolves, he clearly is now trying to take your side and saying, we really should just leave this ec ecological system along until we can find They're out. They're going to cancel us? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised, like, on such a mundane sort of a expedition, the people, the people on it are so, like, you know, horny for a bit of fame. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, not, no, I'm not surprised discovery. at all. It's a bit of a surprise to me yeah. that uh, everyone's willing to just change the mission just because they see something fun well so there's a couple of things probably to know number number one the people on the mission were kind of handpicked for their spectacular expertises mm -hmm. uh you don't know for sure exactly like Morty and Wen were clearly like researchers nobody really heard of you until you were recommended by your agency but uh Cole and Deborah St. James are are super world famous like faces of science yeah sure so but like this wasn't the sort of expedition they were going to make any sort of headlines or famous stuff i think right. that like, or they, like big news they're they're guiding things along the way that they see fit and what they see fit is that this is the situation that we're in so like i, they, I would they, think that go on i would think that they were actually trying to make I mean, we're we're doing something so dangerous because of the possible headlines. I like, mean, also it's right. the science. They want some attention so that they can continue to have more research done here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You like they make were headlines. they were both clearly legit scientists with huge expertise that made them valuable members. But in many ways, they were recruited for the same reason you were allowed on this expedition. They really needed this amazing groundswell of popular support to make it so that the international agencies would even let them come. Because, like, <clears throat> this was basically, they're like, this is suicide. Nobody does this. This is not allowed. There's a reason why it's prohibited. So let's cut off the social media. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, look, we need to sell this thing. We've got Cole on board. We've got St. Jane on board. I see the uh, market. We've got this young, wild boy band guy who's got 15 million followers. Look, we're not going to let teenager be killed on an expedition it really is not that dangerous we've got all the things a, teen a teenager <laughs> an elderly teenager um i'd like to talk to ringo 
aside while while crazy things are happening if that's possible sure you can probably find people are very happy that you're going to try to have a sidebar with ringo yeah hey, hey ringo um real real shame there about uh the social media thing um turning it off i i i don't think it's the right honestly i don't think it's the right call yeah it's uh if they're looking for making headlines, uh, this is what I could do. A social media master, just a quick sh video here, a little picture here. You got the whole world talking about this panther bird. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's very valuable. I think the main thing is that, you know, they, they got to they gotta keep the lights on. They got to keep getting, they got to build, build some interest in this. Um, at the same time, I, I see why we can't release it now but may maybe we could maybe i could talk to them we could we could figure out a way to like record it don't release it save it on a hard drive and then once we've got all the information at the end then you can put it up on your social media then we can they can get the attention that they need for this project once once we have all the facts and you'll have all of that content for your social media I appreciate the work you're going to do here, Didi, but I can read the writing on the wall. No one here likes me. No one here wants me here. This is just a great excuse for them to, for me to stop doing the social media stuff. I, I, I think you're looking at it the wrong way. I think this is an opportunity. Like, it's challenging to work with scientists, I know. They're, there's a lot of smart people here with a lot of opinions, but... Um, we, we we can work together. We can we can make this happen. We just gotta. I could start a Twitter. You know, call it Bird Watch or Cat Watch, Cat Bird Watch. <laughs> <laughs> start hinting out the releases of this. Well, so that fans can watch the the discovery of this new animal <gasps> in I... pseudo real time. You know, four or five hours each. But that's an exciting four or five hours. One that they will have the audience. On the edge of the seat. I like the idea. I really like the idea. I don't think the scientists are going to buy the real time release. Like the delay, if we delayed it until after the expedition, after they have some solid information, because you know scientists, if they if it le if the wrong thing leaks too early, somebody else blows it up, they they could lose a lot of funding that before before we even get anywhere. I but if you would agree to, you know, not post it, we you could still record your content, and then we could release it later. All right, I'll agree to not release anything, but I'm gonna have to have something, otherwise my followers are just gonna be going up to a dry well. Huh? Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could just lead them on without giving any particulars. Something like. New discovery. You you could talk about how the plans have changed. You could you could say stuff like that. I'm sure we could get that cleared. All right, here's something. I've been trying for weeks to get interviews with all the scientists. They've been brushing me off, but I will not post anything <coughs> about the new animal if I can get interviews from the scientists. I, I think that's reasonable. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them when once they're not, you know, busy in the media. Excellent. So while all the business is going on, you've had your sidebar. The scientists are doing their thing. The, you're already making a tranquilizer. Scott comes up to you and, like, puts his hand on your shoulder in a sort of paternalistic affectionate way that's like the first time he sort of approached you in such a like peer type of fashion my friend so you know i looked through your file before this thing got underway you're a lot more than you look on the surface aren't you i mean i'm just trying my best all right i i I'm going to be honest with you. I, I sometimes wonder, you know, what I'm actually doing here, right? Well, from I'm what kinda, I can see from your file... I'm looking for a place to land, as is, you know? 
I, I feel a bit out of place sometimes. You see, I think you're exactly where you belong. Look through your your notes there. You're a smart guy. You you're you're not a simple bartender. You've got some professional training. Surprisingly enough, you know a lot more about chemistry and the sciences than you're letting on. You know, all these brainiacs with their degrees and things like that, you know, they're very short-sighted. You, you seem to be the sort of man who's seen some things and know how the world works. I mean, I'm just trying to find whatever way I can contribute, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like sometimes when I try to contribute, I just kind of get pushed aside. You know, m- mugged off, you right. know. <clears throat> so. Oh, I totally get that. I mean, I run this show. And those eggheads out there, they're overriding me all the time. Because they see me as just some old explorer with a mustache. And don't respect the fact that I don't have some scientific degree like they do. And just sort of political muckety-muck. But it's guys like you and me that, that make the world go round. You know, we're the ones who like go to meetings and sign contracts and get funding and whatnot. You know, we gotta get those teenagers on board so they think that we're doing some sort of like uh, cool, snazzy, tight pantsy thing. You know that like with their social medias and their Facebooks and things. Look, you know how important what we've just discovered is, right? This this is this is what this sort of thing is all about. What. Well- what I gotta say is, you know, whether or not we move on to something else, or if we follow on with this whole uh, thing about the the mammal, I'm I'm down for whatever. I I, I ain't got nothing else. You know, I'm here. I'm part of the team, and uh, you know, I think whatever whatever you say flies. So that's exactly what I want to hear. See, I thought you'd be the kind of person we could confide in. See, what those zig heads don't understand is that. You don't get funding for an expedition like this at this level of risk. And there isn't some return on investment, if you understand. You know, ice cores are important, but there's no money in ice cores. We can bring those cores back, to be sure. And let me tell you, this equipment for coring that ice, it's cutting edge. Don't even know how it really works. Like To be able to bore ice cores that far deep in this short of a time shouldn't be possible. But let me tell you, we're here for a lot more than ice cores. This thing with the animal out there, it's actually what we're here for. See, we know that there's something out here, something that has been rumored about for years. Every expedition, we've looked at my great-grandfather's notes. There's a lot more out here than just empty tundra and penguins. I plan to bring evidence back. Show that my great grandfather wasn't some hack or someone who got all his people killed. So something out here that people don't understand. I didn't think we'd get any information or any evidence until we got to the polls, but this this is a godsend. You with me on this? You understand what 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 we're about here? This is very important. Yeah, I know it's very important. I you know, just as long as you, if you think that this is safe, I'll trust your judgment, but. All I gotta say is that uh, you know, if if you're if you're worried about trying to drum up attention, uh, you might want to reconsider what you've thought about Ringo's uh, social media presence. You might be able to you know have some positive spin on this if that's what you're looking for. The problem is we can't let any of this get out until we know for sure what we're dealing with. We can't have any information getting back and having them pulling the plug before we're done here. Ringo puts that all at risk. Once we figure out what the messaging is, this is going to go out. We will be famed everywhere. This will clear my father's name. It will set us up for life. But until we get there, we can't take the risk that any paper pushers or regulatory agencies will get information about this and shut us down. Look, I've already changed the passwords. Nobody is going to get any information in or out of here until they get specific permission from us. All right. We can't take the chance that they're going to shut these things down. Right now, we're completely radio silent. We've got to find out what we're dealing with. We're going to get back with this information, and we've got to make sure no one steals it from out from under us. So what happened to my great-grandfather. He was going to be there first, and that damn Edmondson got out there before he did. Ruined his career, ruined his life, killed everyone. Had he gotten there first, he'd probably be alive and would have gotten back. We're not going to let that happen again.
I mean, what, whatever's best for the environment, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I, I agree with you. I, I see what you're getting at. All right. Just let me know when I, I've got something crucial to provide for you guys. Yeah. I just need to know that you're with us. You know, get out there. I'm with the whole team. Uh, I'm with everybody. What if everybody's not on board? Well, I mean, you're, you're a captain, mate. I see. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I see. Just know, man, that when the time comes, I may ask you to step up. I need to know I can count on you. All right, bro. I don't laugh in character. Sure, I'm, sure. I'm, 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 yeah. la I'm, la I'm laughing at your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Look, in case it wasn't clear, he wants you to be willing to kill for him when he asks you to. Kill these people? Yes. <laughs> Wait, he's being that explicit? He's not being that explicit. But you, okay. you definitely can tell that basically what he's saying is that maybe not shoot someone in the head, but if it comes down to it, and there are people who are going to mutiny or disagree. He needs someone in his corner to be the tough who says, look, we're doing this. And you're not going to say no. So that's, I'm picking up that. You're definitely picking that up. I hope we don't have to get to that point. I'm sure we probably won't. But you know, some hard heads out there. Amateurs, people who just aren't on board, who don't know the value of true discovery. You know, Darwin didn't discover his finches by being nice to his crew. That guy knew how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, a bit, a bit, bit of a piss take, mate. <laughs> Everybody on expeditions like this goes through psychological evaluation, and he got skipped. Yep. <laughs> like, I'm like listening to this, and I'm like, what nepotism? I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna die. Yep. <laughs> and, oh wait, does he work? He works directly for Herbert Industries, doesn't he? Him? Well, no, he, no, uh, uh, Scott. Look, Scott. This expedition is primarily funded by Herbert Industries. Marcus. Nobody knows exactly what his relationship with them are. Like, does he work for Herbert or does Herbert just like, you know, it's like, oh, I just got a grant from the, you know, Margaret T. and John D. Foundation for music and opera. It's like, well, you don't work for them. They gave you a million dollars to open an opera house, right? But you name it after them. And if they show up and they say, we need 10 front row tickets for the show, mm -hmm. it's like, sure, how about they pick it for you or fine? <laughs> What? We need ten new Are weird species puppies, <laughs> or kittens. I don't right. think I, I don't think I have it in me. <laughs> and just as your conversation is finishing, a super loud thump noise strikes. You hear a boom echo through the Falcon, and the emergency alarms go on. And that's the end of the episode. Oh. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, I'm gonna get shot by someone <laughs> left in the middle of the ice, and then that dude is crazy. No, no, no you won't be he's shot not crazy. Here. He's just very motivated. Bring, oh, there'll crazy. be this beautiful he's scene stuck. where Ringo is running, and the oh, and the ice truck laughing. is just driving. The Falcon's just he's driving. Just mad off. His great grandfather like, was no, like, just... "Wait for me!" And you're freezing as you're running. <laughs>